Hi, welcome to the Christian Ninja Channel. I'm Pastor L. I'm a variety streamer who streams from Sunday to Thursday at noon on for a few hours. We play games, we chat about all kinds of stuff, and one of the things we do is that on Thursday at noon, we do a devotional together. That means a little Bible study, a little talk, a little chat about some important things in our life. I'd love it if you joined us. I'd love it if you came. Drop by the Twitch channel. And if this touches you and you enjoy it, please leave a like, hit subscribe. It really helps us out. I hope to see you there, and I hope it blesses you. Tell you what, why don't I pray, and I will, uh, I'll jump into it. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the, the joy we can have together in, uh, in knowing you. Thank you for the community that's online, for all the people that have joined, for the, the chat that is uh, going on, for a loving community that uh, is, is uh, so good to be a part of. And I uh, pray that as we do the Devo and as we read the Bible, that you'd be glorified and, and we'd, be, we'd be helped. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's just jump into it. So I've been given a series of devotionals recently from Paul's letter to the Philippians, and it has been, I think, a real blessing to see Paul's perspective of what he's going through. So if you if you know the context of Philippians, you'll remember that Paul, as he's writing the letter to the Philippians, he's sitting under house arrest. He's been there for about two years. He's been accused of some terrible things by the Jewish ruling council in Jerusalem. And as a Roman citizen, he used his right to appeal to Caesar. And so now he's in the city of Rome awaiting to be brought to Caesar, who happens to be one of the worst men in history, Nero to see if he'll be released or if he'll be killed. Uh, when the Philippian church heard about this and they heard about Paul's situation, they kind of freaked out and for good cause. Uh, one of their favorite people in the world, the man who planted their church, he'd pastored them for a while. Uh, they'd, he'd been supported by them financially and with help uh, just so he could spread the gospel throughout the world. Well, now he's doing exactly the opposite of what he they thought he was supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be traveling and, and planting churches and meeting new people and going back through the churches so he could take care of them. And now he's stuck in one spot. He's He could be dead any day because of something he didn't do. It's unjust. So they're kind of freaking out. And when the Philippians heard this, they heard about Paul, they immediately gathered up some funds to pay for Paul's rent and they appointed some people to go help him. They sent along a letter. And, and in that letter, judging by what we read from Paul's letter, there was a lot of worries listed. They were kind of panicking. So in the studies that we've gone through so far, uh, right at the beginning of the letter, you can kind of see how Paul starts with just love. Love is overflowing on these pages. Uh, it's really a love letter from a pastor to his church. He's longing to be with them. He's thankful for them. He wants nothing but the best for them. He assures them that even if the worst should happen, God will continue the work that's going on within them because Jesus is the one that saved them, not him. Now, the section we're in right now is uh, chapter 1, verses 12 to 14, when Paul addresses the issue of him being stuck under house arrest and lets him know that even though things look bad, even though it looks like the missionary work is stopped, God has been doing things in a way that he and they never would have imagined. So let me read the section. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, have, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So last time I was here and I, and I spoke, uh, we emphasized how God can do some pretty amazing things when the situations look bleak. In fact, it was because of Paul's imprisonment that he was able to bring the gospel to places he never could have before. Now the whole imperial guard knew Paul's testimony. They knew what Jesus had done for him. They, they knew the injustice of him being arrested. Plus, as people in Rome and around Rome had learned what Paul was going through, it didn't make them afraid to speak about Jesus in public. It actually emboldened them to start sharing their faith even more. And that's the part I want to park on today. Last week, we talked about how sometimes when our life plan seems to go off the rails, that's kind of when God really starts to get warmed up. That's sometimes that's what's happening. But what I want to emphasize now isn't necessarily God's crazy work and how he does things, but the ripple effect that Paul's faith in God's plan had on the people around him. So if you look at the beginning of verse 14, you'll see, 
most of the brothers. Now, brothers is a, actually a gender neutral term. So it just it's like saying mankind, meaning all men and women. So imagine how many people that is. Most of the brothers. Paul wrote this letter. It wrote his letter to the Romans in 57 AD. He's writing this letter to the Philippians in 62 AD. That means the Roman church has been around for over five years. That is a lot of people that have been now set on fire to spread the gospel because of what Paul is going through. And look again at verse at the second part of verse 14. It says, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment. That's a weird statement when you think about it. As the believers in Rome learned about the Apostle Paul, this greatest living missionary had been falsely accused, brought to Rome in chains, locked to a Roman guard for two years, waiting to stand before this insane Emperor Nero. It made them more confident. It made them more bold to talk about Jesus, which was a subject that was absolutely going to get them in trouble. Now, maybe they lacked boldness before. Maybe they we're just letting Paul do all the work. Maybe the fear of the government, the fear of their neighbors had scared them into talk, not talking about Jesus so much in public. But now, hearing Paul's story, seeing Paul's courage, witnessing Paul's faith, most of all, just realizing that Paul had such a strong faith in Jesus that he would willingly put himself into this terrible, difficult position, caused them to reevaluate their faith. They started checking their own motives, rediscovering their own purpose, asking themselves, why did God save them in the first place? What is their mission on earth? Why did God put a church in Rome in the first place? And think about it. It was because Paul, years before, had obeyed Jesus by just going to Jerusalem. He knew he was going to be in trouble. People had actually tried to stop him. They're like, you're crazy. Don't go to Jerusalem. You're going to get killed. But he knew, even though he was going to get in trouble, even though he knew he'd be attacked, knowing he was putting his life on the line, he trusted Jesus so much, he was willing to go through all that, through trials and suffering and months of travel, a shipwreck, years in prison. It was because he trusted God's plan that much that now, years later... All of Rome was being affected by the gospel. It's strange to think that God's plan for spreading the gospel in Rome wasn't to bring Paul there to preach, which was like everywhere else. It was to stop Paul from preaching so that so many others would do it for him. Seeing what God was doing through Paul gave these Romans a level of confidence in the Lord they hadn't had before. What's my point? My point is that how you live your life has ripple effects you can't anticipate. See, we live in this very individualistic society. We're constantly told that the most important person in our lives is me. It's ourselves. How many commercials? I was thinking about Christmas. How many commercials did you hear this past Christmas where they said, when you buy a gift here, we'll throw in a gift card or you'll get something free for you because you deserve something for doing something so great. After all, isn't Christmas really about you? I heard multiple commercials like that. And when it comes to personal morality, our own personal sense of right and wrong, we're told constantly that people should be able to do whatever they want to do as long as it doesn't affect anyone else, right? What all of these things forget is that there is no such thing as living apart from others. Radical individualism is a myth. Everything we do has a ripple effect. Everything everyone else does impacts us. The relationships you choose to have or not have have an effect on others, your community, everywhere. What you do with your money, what you choose to watch, has a ripple effect. The clothes you wear, the way you spend your time, the, the words that come out of your mouth, the classes you choose to take in school, the good deeds, the bad deeds, even the, the look on your face have ripple effects. What you do behind closed doors in the darkness thinking nobody will ever see, that ripples out too. In your thinking, in your perception of others, you think, well, I'm by myself. It's on a screen. But whoever you were on screen with and your perception of everyone around you because of that, it changes. It has ripple effects. So does inaction. Choosing not to do anything. Choosing not to get involved. Choosing to drop your responsibilities. Give up your opportunities. Throw your hands in the air and just give up. That has a ripple effect too. Others will be affected. 
And that ripple, that tiny wave that you started, it keeps going. It doesn't just stop at you or even the person next to you. It doesn't stop at just your family or your friends or the community around you. It goes to your work, your team, your church, your town, even the people you connect to online and beyond. If you don't believe me, take one thing that has affected you or someone else that you know, good thing, bad thing, positive thing, negative thing, whatever it is, and trace the origin of that action. Work backward to where the ripple started. If someone abused you, if someone gave you a gift, if someone stole something from you, if someone said something nice, try to trace it back. What caused that person to hurt you or help you? What influenced them? Where did that come from? What happened that hour, that day, in their whole life that brought them to this place where they made whatever it was happen? And who else was involved? Where did the gift come from? What situation caused the person to want to steal? As you trace the origin of this one action that happened to you, you will never find the origin until you get all the way back to Adam and Eve. Why? Because everything ripples. Everything we do touches others. So my encouragement today, and this is the application, to consider for your life. Uh, think about what you do. Consider your life, your faith, your decisions, your choices, your priorities, your actions, just like the Roman church did because of what Paul was going through. Meditate on your own life, your own choices, and ask yourself these questions. First, what in my life right now could be having effects on people that I've never considered before? And second, Whose life has affected me in a positive way that I need to thank? And then as you live today, as you live this week, take that into consideration as well. And then live appropriately. Live with that in mind. And that's the Devo today. What are your thoughts on that? Isn't, uh, isn't it... What are your thoughts on that? Look at the uh, look at the chat. It says, isn't it crazy that Paul being thrown into prison emboldened the rest of the believers? It's totally, exactly. That's the whole point, right? It's the opposite of what you'd expect to happen. Uh, and, and as you say, Ever Killian, Paul knew wherever he was is where God wanted to be. But you think back to the story of when he got thrown into, into prison. Uh, it was because he went to Jerusalem on purpose. And he had people like, prophesying to him saying you can't go you'll get killed i can't believe god wants you to go there you're gonna get hurt you're too important don't go and he's like this is where i need to go and he went knowing he would get in trouble it's to me that's bizarre and the ripple effects that that action had that incredibly difficult decision had went so far i mean we're still affecting them right now right we're feeling them right now because he made the decision to go to jerusalem how whatever to you know 2000 and however many years ago it's it's crazy uh, everything that happened has done something positive to your life even the bad stuff because you can learn from that yeah you make a good point is that um i wouldn't say that everything it has a positive effect I, like i know that one of the christian things that we tend to say is you know everything works out for the good but at the same time there's some really horrible stuff uh when we say that we don't mean that everything that happens to you is good we're saying that even the worst things that have happened to you that should have never happened to you, the most worst, terrible stuff that you should never have gone through, God has the power to turn that around, to use it for a good purpose. Like if you were hurt or abused or, or, or whatever, that should have never happened. God didn't want that to happen. God at no point would have chosen, you know, like he didn't decide that uh, abuse is the way to go. This is my perfect will. It was, that's a result of sin, a result of people's actions. But um, he says, I can take that and I can refine it so that your, it will not go to waste. And that's, that's part of the, uh, part of the promise that is made when we, when we turn these actions over to, over to God, when we say, okay, I will forgive. I will choose to live your way. Uh, and God goes, I can use that and I can turn it into something good. All right. So that's my Devo. Uh, we are going to...